good morning my dear friends of uh, semester 3 and uh, prospectively of semester 4 as well well today i am going to discuss the issue of racial tension ethnic tension as represented in the kaitranas now before i actually tell you something about the racial tension and its representation in the kaitra we have to understand something about race and ethnicity you know ethnicity is basically uh, an umbrella term for distinctness and difference among groups of people on the basis of such determinants as race caste religion language place of birth or origin uh, physical features and so on and so forth now race we all know is based on anthropological differences of types of the human being you know there are races basic races like the mongoloid the caucasian the aryan the negroid and so on and so forth now even though these are the basic races ultimately they have percolated in uh different places to different formations for example in a multi racial multi ethnic society and land as afghanistan is there have been various migrations and invasions as a result different communities races of people have settled down and intermarried as a result certain mixed races have come to pass for example there have been the predominant majority pashtun population there are also the tajiks the uzbeks the hazaras and others now pashtuns have always been the dominant racial formation in afghanistan even though there have been tensions among the pastoons the tajiks and tajiks and so on one thing has always remained almost the same that is the marginalization of the hazaras who have mongoloid features okay flat nose a uh, little bit of uh, yellow skin uh small eyes sunken eyes and so on and uh, they are also religiously different why because they are shias whereas the others are sunni so hazaras have often been marginalized they have often been accused of being influenced by iran which is a, a contiguous country and which is predominantly shia the racial tension has got in the case of afghanistan predominantly cultural roots but at the same time there are economic dimensions 
because the hazaras have not only been marginalized they have always been treated as subservient they have become the servant classes and they have always been subjected to social isolation and ostracism i would for those of you who are interested in reading the text i will actually try to refer you to a passage in which amir is actually asking his history teacher to talk about the hazaras and their marginalization because he had found out a history book you know Mm, written by an Iranian uh, an historian, and uh, which he found amongst the books of of his one-time professor mother, to feel for me. In that book, as Hassan, uh, sorry, Amir points out, the Hazaras have been treated as the marginalized section. and the reaction of the pashtun teacher is very very typical he says that the shias the hazaras have often or have, have sorry always been good at self aggrandizement and falsification of history which unfortunately is not true if you look at the major characters of khalid husain is the kind of runner you will see that ali and hasan and sanawar they are supposed to be hazaras hasan actually grows up knowing himself to be a hazara boy even though ultimately it turns out that he has pashtun blood in his veins he was a mother father, he was the son of a Pashtun father and a Hazara mother. What I am trying to point out is the fact that just look at the difference between the social status of Amir, the Pashtun, and Hasan, the apparently Hazara boy. Amir goes to school. is the blue eyed boy of the household even though his father is quite indifferent in some ways and considers him not but in us uh hasan is a servant figure even though he is a companion almost a brother figure a friend a never failing companion he is supposed to cook this clean and be at the beck and call of amir the master even though he is more witty more sensitive and more penetrating in his outlook on life and people he is always given the secondary position in the household and in also the society now i come to i have already talked about the passage in which amir has a discussion about this thing with his um, teacher i have also talked about the family situation in the household of baba now i would like to discuss the way asif the sociopath bully the pashtun supremacist who believes in the supremacy the superiority and the rights of the pashtun population how he actually treats the hazaras because his attitude is indicative of typical of the majority response to them 
आसिफ टोन्स एंड बुलीज अमीर क्रिटिसाइजिंग हिम एंड हिज फादर फॉर बींग फ्रेंडली विद द हजारा वो आर फिट टू बी सर्वेंट ओनली एंड वेन द वार ब्रेक्स आउट अमीर रीड्स इट रीड्स अबाउट इट from his safe shelter of uh, united states there are many sectarian killings the racial tension is very very volatile and and uh, the situation is ever worsening because of the racial tension what i would like to point out in this respect is the trip to hazara jot you know hazara jot is supposed to be a kind of a ghetto where the hazaras are to be segregated and confined to which you know hazara jot the land of the hazaras you know they are to be confined there to and uh, rahim khan goes to hazara jot to bring hasan and his wife back to kabul to take care of baba's house in their absence that is baba and amir are absent and rahim khan wants them to look after this property Asketic. They are supposed to serve their pastoon uh, masters, to be devoted to their pastoon masters, and even if need be to risk their own safety and well-being to the discharging of their duties towards their pastoon masters. This is exemplified when Hasan stands up for Amir. and threatens uh this um, asif fellow uh, with the catapult or the sling shot you know and then and, and, and um, also when he is uh, he he prefers to be raped rather than to return empty handed without the kite that is so dear to <coughs> i mean it is also got to the fore when hasan and his wife are brutally killed by the taliban without any rhyme and reason only to satisfy their lust for blood and their grabbing mentality for property shorab's case being compared to be the slave a sex Slave is also another case in point. Ultimately, however, Amir matures to such an extent that he can stand up for others, even for a Hazara. who is present like like show up so there is a note of optimism at the end of the novel whereby we are given to believe that when progress comes when enlightenment comes education comes this racial tension may subside and become a thing of the past so this was my take on the representation of racial tension in khaled husaini's the kaitranas and i think with this we have come to the end of our topic wise discussion of the kaitranas 
from now on we will discuss other topics and i leave it to you to decide on our next course of action i am going to share with you another audio today in which i will talk about certain academic matters this much for the time being thank you for listening